Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the RLP show, Real Talk with Rebecca. We have got some real topics for tonight, guys. We have two guests coming on with some real life, real questions, real situations, and we've got some real answers, some real help, okay? So tonight, our two guests, I've, I've named the two topics for our two guests tonight, people-pleasing and perverted fathers. People-pleasing and perverted fathers. Hello, hey Donna. Hey guys, welcome as you're coming on. We're gonna give just a couple minutes before we get started. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's my first guest already on and ready to go. Alyssa, I see you, sweetheart. I'm gonna bring you on in just a moment after we get everybody on here for a second, give everybody a second to come on. Excited to be here. Hi, Tehran, or is it Taryn? Not sure how to pronounce your name, sweetheart. Welcome, guys. So yeah, tonight's topics, people-pleasing how to stop being a people pleaser, how to believe in yourself. And our second guest, we're going to talk about sexual abuse, perverted fathers, and recovery. Recovery from sexual abuse. Seema, hey baby. Hello, hello everyone as you're coming on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, so happy to have you here with me tonight for these sacred conversations right that's what these are is conversations guys with some coaching thrown in with a lot of love right a lot of insight god is with us in these conversations right we're giving direction insight and help for people who are trying to navigate life in order to live abundantly you know that we are all about a healing movement and a movement of abundant life Abundant life requires healing, guys. It requires healing, mind, body, and spirit. Amen. All right, guys, I love you. I know, great topics, right, Lena Boo? We're gonna get ready to get started. I'm gonna get ready to bring Alyssa on with me in just a moment as everyone's coming on. Blessings and abundance. One day I'm gonna do a video and explain to you guys why I say blessings and abundance, why we say blessings and abundance over here at Abundant Life Path and our Abundant Life Nation movement. Right, I'm going to explain what blessings and abundance means and why I always greet you and leave you with blessings and abundance and what that means, right? Hello, hey Laura, hey guys. Abundant life requires healing. Seema's got a quote, right? Love your bracelets. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pray for Haiti. We are praying for Haiti, love. We are praying for Haiti. We are praying for Cuba. Amen. We are praying for everyone around the world. Uh, Revelations, Epiphanies, I love you wearing a lot of white lately. Any reason? I've always loved white. I love a lot of white, especially in the spring and summer, guys. I wear a lot of white. I love white. I have a white truck. I have a lot of white clothes. <laughs> I love white. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and bring our first guest on because we're going to jump right in. All right. Let me go in here and bring in Alyssa. Send you the invite, Alyssa. Hi, Enuma. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Karen. Hello, everyone, as you're coming on. Thank you for joining me tonight. We're going to have some fabulous, amazing breakthrough conversations with some coaching thrown in. We are going to have a great time tonight. So, Alyssa, I've sent you the invite to join. Here comes Alyssa. Hi, beautiful. Uh, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I am doing great. I'm going to make sure I try to back up enough so I'm not being cut off in the uh, in the camera real quick. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm adjusted. Yeah, there we go. That's what I need to do. Hello, love. Oh, I love you. It's so I good love just to be up here with you. I am so excited you're on with me as well. Thank, Thank you for you. coming on. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. Thank you for being willing to be transparent yeah. and sending me your beautiful email. Guys, the topic of her email, let me tell you, the subject line of her email says, how do I break free? Like, oh, I just feel that, right? And I know that that's going to resonate with a lot of our viewers tonight and everybody who catches this over on YouTube. They're going to be like, yeah, how do I break free from where I'm at right now? So do you mind if I read just a little bit of your email that you sent to give your backstory? Just a little Not bit. At all. Not at all. Okay, wonderful. All right. First of all, Lisa, where are you from? Where are you from? So I'm, I'm in Texas right now, Killeen, Texas, right outside of Portland. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Where are you originally from? 
Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, Illinois. Shy town. Okay. All right. She's in Texas, guys. This is Alyssa. Um, she sent me a birthday message. This is back from May when we were first accepting people applying to come onto the show. Um, she says, I'm Alyssa. I'm 30 years old, and for the most of my adult life, I've just gone with the flow. I'm transitioning out of the military in a few months, and I'm having trouble trusting God with this next season of my life. I struggle with hearing from God, which is why I always depend on other people to tell me how to live my life. In previous seasons, I thought I heard God and ended up being so wrong, and it scares me when I get a new idea that I believe came from him. I feel like I have to get someone else's approval first. I also struggle with setting boundaries and pleasing people. I feel like there's this woman inside of me that is trying to break free from this box that I put myself in. My question is, how do I do that and where do I start? Yes. All right. That's Alyssa's backstory, guys. That's her beautiful email she sent me. Okay, so Alyssa, let's, let's just jump right in here. First of all, when you feel like you're in a box and you feel like you're very concerned about what other people think and you rely on other people's opinions for your direction in life, this didn't start like yesterday, okay? Yeah. It started a long time ago. And the way that this starts is somewhere in your youth, at a certain age, you were beginning to express ideas. You were beginning to stretch your wings. You were beginning to be like, I'm Alyssa. Hear me, Lord. This is what I like. This is what I'm interested in. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. And there was, because every child is born a dreamer. Every child is born confident. Mm -hmm. Every every single child is born believing in themselves, trusting God, trusting the adults in their life. And somewhere along the line, that got interrupted. If you go back and review your youth and your childhood, when can you pinpoint where you began to get muted you began to doubt yourself. Is, is there a specific time in your life that that came to mind? Um, just growing up, just uh, being in a house with my parents, and anytime I would speak up for myself or having an opinion, oh, yo, shut up, I'm talking about, it. or you know, you can't, you, you're not allowed to. to basically, have an opinion. You do as I, what I say, and that, that that's what I say goes. What you have to say, it doesn't matter. So just just growing up in general, it was always like that with my, especially with my father. Mm -hmm. So old school, yeah, like. Very old school. And, we, and we're and we familiar with that, especially in black families, guys. If you were born and was your father in the military, was uh, there? No, my stepmom was in the military. My father wasn't, no. Your father wasn't in the military, but he was just a firm, the child stays in a child's place. Yes. You sit over there and be quiet, right? Yep. Don't ask too many questions, right? We don't like these questions because we may not have all the answers to these questions. Yes. Right? Um, was it religious? Or did you grow up Christian? Very religious. Extremely. Yes. Okay. Well, there you have it. It's twofold, right? Yes. You've got a very strict parent mm -hmm. who is silencing you, controlling you, minimizing your voice, right? Silencing you. Mm -hmm. And then you've got layer that on with religion, which comes in and says pretty much everything you do is wrong, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's religion, guys, yeah. especially very strict religion. If you were any type of religion, any type of denomination that was strict-ish, mm -hmm. what denomination did you come from? Um, so originally we started Baptist, and then when I was about 13 and 14, it's when we switched to non-denomination. Okay. So in your household... Um, so your father's kind of ruling with a really strong, firm hand, but then how did religion play a part in your psyche as far as believing in yourself or silencing you? What was that extra layer of religion? How did that play out? Um, so it was my stepmom, who's actually the, the super religious one. And I don't know, I just, um, I felt like we were taught, you know, that we had to obey their parents and you know, whatever, whatever the church, the church is teaching you is what, is what went. And so it was basically, it was like, I, I didn't have a choice in anything. 
um, mm -hmm. either God or, or my parents, and that was it. It was never what Alyssa wanted or what I thought. It was always either you do what the church to do or you do what, the, what your parents say to do, and that's that's the end of story. Mm -hmm. So as you're saying that, one of the things I've observed over the years, um, Alyssa, with with people who grew up with a very strict parent and or religion or, you know, both is it creates codependency oh, yeah. because you've been taught that you've not been taught to look inside. You've not been taught to trust your own voice. Right. Makes no sense. Yeah. It's like your parents are dictating. You're looking to them for all the answers, all direction. And if not them, it's God. Right. Yeah. Or, or as a byproduct or bystander to that, the people of God, the woman of God, the man of God, the pastor, minister, right? Or anybody who proclaims to be led by God or hearing from God, you're going to kind of be listening because you think you're needing their direction and their input. Right. So in your 20s, what, what, how old were you when, when you went into the military? I was 21. 21. So you've been in the military almost a decade. Mm -hmm. Leaving home. Yeah. Is that when you left home and yeah. went into the military? Mm -hmm. Were you escaping home going into the military or was it like a choice? No, I wanted to get, I mean, it was, it was my, so it was my mom's choice, but I agree because I just wanted to get away from her. Right. So is it, it was a solution when you didn't know what else to do and didn't have direction and didn't feel like, you know, I don't know what I want or what I want to do. Right. Yes. And it's not a coincidence that you then went into a structure that created all the rules and told you who to be, what to do, just like home. Right. Not a coincidence. Hold on one second. Your internet was freezing. Just in a second. There, you're back. Your internet froze for just one second. So not a coincidence. It, it's subconscious. You understand what I'm saying? It's subconscious that you weren't making a conscious choice to go into such a structured environment again, but that's what you did. So then the military is controlling, still controlling the decisions, right? The day-to-day -day that you don't feel the pressure to say, where am I going? What do I have to do? Who am I? Right, wow. So, Alyssa's now 30 mm -hmm. and about to leave the military. Mm -hmm. Scary. Very. Because now, all of a sudden, you're about to be just Alyssa. Mm -hmm. And you've never been Alyssa on your own no right right so one of the things if, if i want you to study codependency okay i want you to study i want you to really dig into what codependency means what it looks like what it feels like because everything you shared with me is a symptom of codependency the people pleasing the indecisiveness, right? Being afraid to make decisions on your own, feeling like you're not capable of making these decisions on your own. Mm -hmm. This, that's all part of never having been a, they allowed to be independent, encouraged to be independent, right? And to make your own choices and have your own thoughts. So guess what? Isn't it logical that you don't trust your own thoughts and feelings and decisions? Yes. Does that make sense? I mean, to me, yes. it's completely logical. It makes like, sense. As you're talking, it, it makes so much sense. Like, I, I, you know, I'm like, oh my God, like that, like, Eureka. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's logical. Like, of course you feel this way. Of course you're lacking these life skills. These are life skills yeah. because no one around you as role models, mentors, parents taught you to do these things for yourself. So now at 30, you're going to have to develop these life skills, which means you're going to have to be very intentional 
very intentional. It means you're going to have to do a lot of work to reprogram your heart, your mind, your core beliefs. Because, sweetheart, guess, guess what one of your core beliefs is? What is it? That you're not enough. Oh, yeah. Just you. Just Alyssa. By herself, standing on her own two feet, feet on the ground. You don't, deep down inside, you're afraid. I don't, I don't, I, I ain't got this. You know, we said, I got this. Alyssa's like, I ain't got this. <laughs> like, yeah. Right? That's true. I ain't got this. I, I, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. And then when you have tried to wing it, you have tried to make a decision or make a choice. Do you know why it didn't work out? Maybe because I didn't believe in myself? Exactly. It's not that you didn't hear from God, sweetheart. It's not that you got it all wrong. It's that then when you made the decision and made the choice, here comes all the fear and the doubt and the worry and the anxiety. And all of that now is counteracting the choice. It's sabotaging your results in the decision you made. So fear, right? False evidence appearing real. Now all this fear is back here. What does fear do? It literally creates the result that you're so afraid of getting. It's literally prophesying and creating the very thing you don't want. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because you made a, you made a choice. Give, give me an example of one of those choices. We, we have a little bit of time. I'm checking my time. We got time. We're good. I'm doing good. Right? Okay, so give me one of those choices you made where you're like, I thought I heard from God. I thought, man, I thought that I heard. Okay. Um, so moving to Dallas, but I, did, I didn't actually go to Dallas. But I, you know, fear and everything else got in the way, but moving to Dallas. You're like, I'm going to move to Dallas. You're getting excited. You're like, I'm going to do this, right? Then what happened? Then I started talking to people around me, and they went, everybody thought it wasn't a good idea, or I'm moving you know, prematurely, or you know, am I going to have the money to, to stay there? Dallas is an expensive area. You know, what am I going to do? And it's like, oh. and I started thinking about all of that. And then I was like, no, I'm just going to stay here because it's comfortable here. It's where I know my job is here. My unit is here. I might as well just stay here. So here comes the naysayers, the dream killers, the fear instillers, right? The small thinking, the, the don't, no, don't leave home. This is safe. This is where your support network is at. You know people here, Right. And they, they talked you out of it and sowed those seeds inside of you of fear and doubt to where you're like, well, maybe they're right. Maybe this wasn't God. Maybe this. So it wasn't that it wasn't God. It wasn't that it wouldn't have worked out for you. It was that all the messy, 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 small thinking, dream killing people got in your ear and sabotaged that move. You heard from God. That, so here's one of the things that I want you to think about and I want you to start thinking about going forward. When something feels really, really good to you and it gets you excited, that feeling inside where you're like, I wanna do this, I'm gonna do this, right? That excitement, that's called bliss. That's called joy. And that'll carry you really far in life. Because if you follow your bliss, you're going to be authentic to you. To you. Because God gives us this natural spiritual feedback. Bliss and joy is not just random. Mm -hmm. We don't get bliss and joy from just anything. Stop and think about it. We don't get bliss and joy from every relationship we have or friendship we have. We don't get bliss and joy from just any job we have. 
think about it for a second. When you feel bliss slash joy, it is tied to something that is connected to you and is authentic to you. In other words, it's for you. That's why it sparks that like, oh my God, this is so bomb. I love this. Right? <laughs> oh my God, I love you. You are so amazing. You make me feel so good whenever I'm around you. I really like you. We have to pay attention to the people, places, and things that ignite us like that, mm -hmm. that light us up. That is God's spiritual feedback that this is something in this. Now, can it change? Yeah. In one season, something can give you bliss and you dig into it. You're like, yeah, this is it. And I like it. That was me with matchmaking. I was like, yes, I love this. I don't want to do this. And I start doing it and I'm like, uh, wait, I, mm, that doesn't, I'm not liking this no more. But then you have to be able to give yourself permission to say, this no longer brings me bliss. This no longer brings me joy. But guess what? One blissful thing to the next is leading you on your abundant life path. So the bliss of matchmaking led me into healing coaching mm -hmm. and dating coaching. Healing and dating coach me led me into using my spiritual gifts as a healer to create courses that changed people's lives. That opened up doors for me to become a millionaire, selling courses, writing books, helping people all over the world. So would I go back and change being a matchmaker if it was leading me to my husband, breakthrough, prosperity, right? Right. I wouldn't go back and change that choice because it led me to my truth. And a Ashley says, it led to this show, even for us to be right here right now. Okay, so here's the thing. It's going to take work, okay? It's going to take work. The things I'm talking about sound easy, but it's not. You've got Let's say from the time you were five, six years old, you started coming under the influence of the parents who were, had you under the thumb, the, you know, the very controlling, strict environment. Mm -hmm. and, and little Alyssa started getting shut up from the time she was five, six, seven years old. You've got a good 23 years of programming that has to be deprogrammed. And you have to be taught to be able to speak up for yourself which is going to take practice, practice. Now, with everything we're talking about, this affects every area of your life, career, love, friendships. Because can I tell you something that's crucial? Yeah. If you don't ask for what you want, because you don't even know what you want, or when you get in situations and you even know what you want, but you're too afraid to ask for it because you're afraid of offending someone or afraid of what someone's going to think of you or afraid they're not going to do it for you or afraid they don't love you enough to do it. You're sitting back. You're not asking for what you want. And if you show up in life never asking for what you want, you're never going to get it. But see, my thing is that when I do ask for what I want, and I feel like I offend somebody, then I started feel I start feeling bad. Like, you know, but I, I've, I've had friends to where they would ask what they needed and they didn't care how I felt. But when I do it, I feel so bad. I just don't understand why. Like, even a couple of days ago at work, something happened. And I had to tell somebody, like, hey, what you did offended me. And I started feeling bad for it. I just, and I, don't, I don't know. I just don't understand why that always happens. It's programming. Programming. It's, it's, it doesn't even have to be anything they say or do. You feel guilty standing up for yourself. You feel guilty asking for what you want or just showing up. You feel there's a deep-rooted seed that was sown in there that says, don't, don't ask for anything, don't require anything. Somebody said, snatched over there, said, that's the church stuff. Right? That 
that humility, the false humility that makes us want to play small, not require too much of people. Oh, I'm good. No, it's okay. You don't have to do anything for me. I'm okay. Right. Turn the other cheek. Don't, don't confront anything. Exactly. Don't yeah. check people. No confrontation, no conflict. But then we become passive aggressive, right? Because now we are secretly seething and getting angry because we feel like people are walking over us or taking advantage of us because we haven't said anything. That's why it's called passive aggressive. You're passively aggressive. You're sitting over here getting angry, but you're not saying anything and nobody even knows how you feel. Yes, that's definitely me. Because you haven't been taught to communicate to express yourself without being angry. Tell me the last time you got really angry, what happened? Um, I, I was talking to my sister about something uh, a couple, maybe like a week ago that was bothering me and she just totally blew it off like, oh, well, basically I'm gonna do what I want. And I was just livid. I'm like, you know, I'm telling you that this is hurting me. And you, it's like, it's, my, it's like, cause I have a twin sister. Um, and it's like, with her, there are no boundaries. So she's like, she can do whatever she wants or say whatever she wants or just live however she wants when it comes to me. And I can't speak up for myself when I do. I'm just being extra. I'm being too much. And so the other day she did something. I was just like, I was pissed. Because I'm like, it, this is hurting me. Like, it's, 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 it's triggering for me. It's what I told her. And she just like, oh, well, I'm just going to do what I want. And, and it just, it, it really pissed me off. And so one of the things I've observed over the years with clients, Alyssa, is that because no one's used to caring about your feelings, you have, you have taught people how to treat you. You, over the years, you have reinforced, Alyssa doesn't matter. Alyssa's going to always be okay. You don't have to worry about upsetting Alyssa because she ain't going to do nothing anyway. Right. There's no consequences to disrespecting Alyssa. Alyssa doesn't stand up for herself. Alyssa doesn't have boundaries. Alyssa doesn't respect herself, so I don't have to respect her. Alyssa lets anything go. You could do anything to her and she keeps loving you. I could piss Alyssa off and call her tomorrow and she's going to answer the phone and act like nothing happened because she feels this pressure to be the goody goody girl to be a good girl, a good Christian girl, turn the other cheek. So people can shit on you, excuse my language, and you're gonna turn around and be like, oh, hi, hi, best friend. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? No. No, 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 no. And that part of you that feels like you're in a box, sweetheart, that part of you that says, I want to break free from this, that is the part of you that's now become a grown-ass woman and is sick of being treated this way, sick of these types of relationships. But what I want you to do is take ownership. Because you're 30 now. We cannot blame your parents. We, we un Just in this short half hour, we've covered how you got here. We're getting it. I mean, not taking a deep dive, okay? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you got here. Because they're not coming around to fix it. They can't heal it. They can't fix it. It's up to you to take responsibility for your own healing and feelings. And you've got to now process this, even if it means you've got to isolate for a while from the people who hurt you and offend you and do the most while you're finding your voice, while you're finding your backbone, while you're finding your grit. Old folks call it gumption. Where it's like, What'd you say to me? Oh, uh-uh. Who, who, where did I 
said, no man, right? And, and what I learned, sweetheart, as a recovered passive aggressive person, as a recovered good girl, the first time I started standing up to people, it was like, oh, they didn't like it, but they respect it. I began to realize I like respect. I, don't even use the word love. If you're not going to respect me, then you don't love me. Right. Respect equals love. I, I'd rather you have a little bit of fear of me and respect me and respect my boundaries and respect my life and respect my feelings than for you to tap dance all over my heart causing disruption and dest destruction. And, but I love you. Uh, what? No. That ain't no kind of love I want. So even with the loved ones you have in your lives, it's going to take reprogramming them, teaching them these new boundaries as you learn them. Okay? So Ashley's going to put you into... The Work Masterclass e course. Ashley, not yet. We've got to finish it. Oh, you're doing it right now. Yes. Yay! You're already doing the work. Yes, ma'am. Okay. After this course, there's going to be Carrie's doing a religious detox course. Mm -hmm. I want you to make sure you're in that one because that's going to peel back layers of the religious stuff that we need to unwind. Okay. Then after that will be my nice for what course. And that's when you're really going to be ready for all the confidence and self-talk where I have to teach you how to talk to yourself and teach. We're going to do a little bit of that in the master class, but we don't have time to go really in depth to help you get like me. <laughs> we, I, got, I got to literally teach you how to talk to yourself like I talk to myself. And that's going to take some time. So that, there's two more courses you're going to take. Also get therapy. Also get therapy. Okay. And guys, for those of you asking about the Work Masterclass, the e-course is coming this week. We're setting it up right now and getting it set up. So you'll be able to get into the e-course masterclass for the work at the by the end of the week, and you'll get an email. Okay? Uh, Ashley says, Alyssa, thank you for being on here with us today. I'm so glad you're in that course. Me too, sweetheart. Me too. So based on our conversation, how do you feel? I feel like I have a good foundation laid to build on to be that go-getter that you know outspoken woman that i know i can be I and here's something i'm gonna challenge i want to challenge you to do something okay and i know i gotta run i know i got we're, we're over minutes okay um i'm gonna challenge you to start saying no okay. in the next 30 days when people ask you to do things you don't want to do i want you to say no thank you no, thank you. I want you to start using your voice. I want you to start being honest. Being honest doesn't mean you have to get angry to say no. I just want you to start. I want you to stop filtering yourself through that filter, that good girl filter that makes you try to do things that are people pleasing. I want you to intentionally just start speaking your mind. No, I, I don't really feel like doing that this weekend. No, I don't. I don't know. I'm not going to be able to make it. No, thank you. I, you know, that's not a fit for me. No, I'm busy that time at that time. I, I'm double booked. I'm already scheduled for something. You can say whatever you want, but start expressing your true feelings. Stop doing things you don't want to do. Okay. okay? Yes, ma'am. And when somebody does something like what your sister just did, you stop answering the phone right away when she calls you again. You're not going to respect my feelings? Yeah, I, I'm not about to make you a priority. You're going to be on timeout over here. Does that make sense? Yes, and we'll get more into that in modules six and seven. That's coming up in master class, okay? Okay. All right, sweetheart. Thank you so much for coming on today. Blessings and abundance. Let me pray for you. Look, guys, we're going over on time tonight, but. I'm going to pray for Alyssa before she gets on. God, we thank you for Alyssa. God, I thank you for her life. I thank you for her soul. I thank you for destiny and direction. I thank you for healing even now at 30. 
as she begins to go, move forward into her adult life and everything that you have for her, I thank you for healing at this age and not 40 or 50 or 60 years old. She has her whole life ahead of her. We speak abundance, prosperity, love, peace, and confidence over her entire being and her life. Amen. Amen. All right, baby. I will see you in class next week. Okay, bye. Okay, bye, baby. All right, I've got to go look up. Where's my next guest? Daisia. I hope I'm saying Daisia right. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, I can't see. Hello, hello, everyone. Daisia, are you on with us, honey? Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can pull her up. D A J J Ashley, I don't see her on here. Okay, I just sent it to her. Oh, there you are, babe. Yay. I think I hit it. You should sit you should see it coming through, sweetheart. Here she comes. Yay. Isn't that fun, guys? Hi. Hi, beautiful. Okay, tell me how, tell me how to say your name. It's Deja, like Deja Vu. Mm. Deja, I got it. I got it. Like Deja Vu. I love it. How are you doing, beautiful? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. Very honored to be here. Oh, sweetheart. I'm so excited to have you on with us. Um, so your message, your email, like, look, you know, when I went to put the name on the video, I was like, oh, Deja. Like, we, we really going here, aren't we? We really going here. But first of all, let me say this. Okay, Deja, where are you from? Where are you hailing from? Ashley, remind me, we need to update the questionnaire to the city that people are located in, not just the country. Where are you, where are you from? I'm originally from Thomasville, Georgia. Thomasville, Georgia. Uh, Tallahassee. Got mm -hmm. it. All right. Wonderful. And you still live there now? I'm in Atlanta now. Oh, you're in Atlanta. Okay. You're, you're right down the street from me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Okay. Do I have permission to read a little bit of your backstory that you sent me from the email? I do have permission to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Buckle up, y'all. Buckle up. We are we are going to get into a heavy subject, but it's real and it needs to be talked about. And Deja, I am so proud of you and your courage, your boldness to speak up and speak out. I'm just proud of you, babe. These are discussions and conversations that need to be had. Okay. All right, guys. So Deja's subject of her email to me said perverted fathers. She says, hi, Mrs. Pope. Thank you for all that you do. I recently just exposed my father's perversion, which has started a war. But I knew I did the right thing because more people in my family came forward, letting me know that I am not the only one he has done things to. I am overwhelmed with love and support, but also in pain because my mother is sticking beside him and protecting him. I now know that I have to let them go and allow God to do a new thing. God bless you, Deja. So, Deja, let me let me ask you just a couple questions. And um, so, you just recently made this aware, this revelation in your family. How long ago did you do that? Well, I've actually been making it aware just to like my mom and my brother for years, but it was just go on like normal, like nothing was ever done about it. Um, but this time, cause I vlog a lot on my YouTube and this time I just 
let it out. Like everybody knows my everybody entire knows. family. Yeah. You, so you just kind of were, were sick and tired of it and you went on blast. Like, I'm just going to let everyone know what's really been going on. And yeah. so how long have you held this secret and without telling like the, you know, your family at large, how long did you sit on that secret? Well, I'm 30 now. Um, let's see. Since I was a teenager, very young. Yeah. So how old were you when it started? Mm. It initially didn't start with my dad. It started with my sister. Mm -hmm. So I would say maybe around eight. Yeah. Little. Little. Right. And guys, one of the things, the reason we're, we're bringing these topics onto the show is because this incest is an epidemic. It's an epidemic. Deja, when I say over the years of doing healing work, holding healing classes, uh, training coaches, we have two certified abundant life coaches who have children by their biological fathers. Um, when you are in any line of work where you're helping people to overcome trauma and people are seeking healing, I have personally been in that honored position where people are sharing these types of secrets with me. And, and Deja, over the years, I, I have gotten to the point where I've realized like this stuff is so prevalent. It's just that nobody's talking about it. Right. And the, so we, we know all of the statistics about sex trafficking, and we know the statistics about rape, and we know the statistics about molestation, but at the end of the day, people are not really talking about stuff happening in our own families. And then the right. damage that this does to children, because it's one thing to be molested or raped by an extended, a friend of the family, a teacher, some a stranger, now, it's something else entirely when it's overlaid with it being your father, your brother, right, your cousin, because now the family dynamics are absolutely crazy, crazy. Right. So when it comes to where you're at, and I think on your, um, your questionnaire form, you gave me a little bit more. You said... Your specific questions, you said, um, my current struggles are just learning to navigate healthy relationships with others despite coming from a dysfunctional family. I never felt protected, understood, or heard, which led me to have a low self-worth and having no boundaries when it came to men that gave me little attention. I got married at 22 and was divorced by 25 to a man that I thought would, I would grow old with because I felt protected, but I didn't realize he was only isolating me to do exactly what my father did, which was to break me into submission. I've done therapy and I've managed to come up with a self-love routine that helps me stay focused, but for the sake of my future family, how do I heal effectively and build healthy relationships? How do I distinguish genuine flirting from a perverted spirit? Will I ever have a healthy sex life? I know that if I do things God's way, my God-given spouse will put my heart at ease. And so it also sounds like, so what, was your family religious also? Yes, my, it was mostly my grandmother. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. Not, okay. not your family, not your immediate family so much, but your grandmother. Got it. So you, your faith comes from her. Your faith in God and all of that comes from her. She, 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 we, she we grew up. Okay. Got it. So here's the thing. It's just like I said to Alyssa, whenever we're talking about trauma and we're talking about seeds that were sown from the time you were young, and in your case, honey, 
this there is so much nuance to this that plays into your psyche and how you feel about yourself because it was your father and it gets so confusing um I've dealt with this very personally in our own family. And one of the things that I became aware of from having conversations is that there's all different types of very perverted, hard feelings that come involved with this um, to the extent that you're not in control of what your body responds to, even as a little girl. So what I've experienced and what I've seen with some clients is that there's guilt and there's shame over some of the acts that would take place because your biology, your physiology responds to stimulation, which now it feels like, well, I was, was I enjoying it? That makes, was I part, it was my fault too, because I was kind of taking part in this, but yet so all of that gets so screwed up because you forget that you were a child. A right. child. It is abuse. No matter how you slice it, dice it, it is sexual abuse. And so your brain has developed coping mechanisms, love coping mechanisms i would not be surprised deja if you have developed seeking love and protection from probably men that would make you feel almost like they would be a father figure like protection does that because mm -hmm. i notice in your message to me, you said, I felt protected with your first husband right. that young. You felt protected. Mm -hmm. See how that word came out? Out of all the mm -hmm. feelings, out of all the choices of feelings you could have had about him, you felt protected. Mm -hmm. And that's directly coming out of not feeling protected. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for this feeling of protection that wasn't there from the very man that should have been protecting you. Does that make sense? Absolutely, it does. Mm -hmm. And so healing this aspect of you, one of the, the things that we have to do, and you've got to do the most work around, is your own strength. To where you're not out here vulnerable, looking for a man's protection, looking for a man's covering, looking for a man's provision, looking for a man's support. Look, does that make sense? It does. So it's like you've got to. I'm sorry, go ahead, say that again. I said that's exactly what I was doing, and that's what made me do the therapy because I knew something's wrong here. Something's wrong with me. Yeah. So. Which means that you're going to have to intentionally do a lot of work, a lot of work mm -hmm. about believing in yourself, talking to yourself, and telling yourself, I'm fine until God brings. The man that's going to love me as an equal partner in, in a healthy, non-controlling, abusive way, I'm going to stand on my own two feet. I'm going to do all this healing work to work on me. And as a matter of fact, I'm not for, for there's got to be a period of time, sweetheart, where you literally put men off limits. You're going to have to literally take a step back from men because you're not ready. You've got to right. do this work in order to even show up positioned in a way that can attract and, and receive the healthy love. Because for the 20 plus years of your adult life, 
you've been literally seeing everything through this filter that the abuse caused. It's like a, it's like goggles, right? Mm -hmm. Abuse goggles, pain goggles. And little Deja, little, little girl Deja created some beliefs in her mind around what she deserves, how she feels about herself. And it's not pretty. It's not, it's not good. Because this is what abuse does to our minds. It's what abuse does to our brains. It causes low self-esteem. It causes us to internalize and go inward like, what's wrong with me? Why did he do this to me? And even though it has helped with you being vocal and knowing that he's done it to other people, it wasn't just you. But the part of that little girl, that doesn't make That's not logical to the, the little girl brain, to, to little Deja's brain. That doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, my daddy broke the promise of protecting me and loving me as a father to a daughter. He broke that sacred promise that fathers, all fathers make from the time they father a child, that they should be protecting, providing and caring and loving their children, not harming and abusing their children. Right. So I know that it's very, what happens oftentimes when we have not received the love that we really truly desire from the time we were young, you're out here seeking it. You want it. it right. Getting a man, having a relationship begins to take first priority in your life. It's, it's like you'll, you don't even probably understand why you're so motivated to be in a relationship to be have a loving, healthy, happy relationship. It's a big motivation. There's a big push inside of you. Like, I want this, I want this, I, I wanna be able to have this, I wanna, but that's not all coming from a healthy place. No, nope. not at all. And being able to recognize that and kind of own that, Deja, is so crucial for you to stop, stop and say, break, I've got to take a break from this. Mm -hmm. Because until I work through this stuff, that is not your fault. None of this is your fault. Let me ask you a question. When it comes to the type of men that you attract and you accept, the men, because we have a choice, right? There'll be all different types of men hitting on you. You're beautiful. There'll be all types of men showing interest. But who do you choose? <laughs> the narcissistic manipulators. I've noticed that pattern. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Um, my, my father, because they have that same spirit in them. Yes. Yes. So being able to recognize we have to break that pattern. We have to break the pattern. Which means healing you. Right? Mm -hmm. Healing you deep down on the inside to where you can show up confident. Can, can I tell you what the anti-narcissist is? The anti, it's like, it's like, uh, what, what's the, what do you spray on people's face uh, when somebody's attacking you? The, um, <laughs> it's the, it's the, my the son's got it for me. Spray? The what? The mace. 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 Let me tell you what mm -hmm. the mace is. The, the mace for a narcissist. 
Mace for narcissists, guys, is confidence. Mace. Confidence is the anti-narcissist. Confidence and believing in yourself and knowing what you deserve and not and sticking to your boundaries and saying, what did you, remember how I was just talking to Alyssa, excuse me, what, what did you do? What did you say? And narcissists pray, they are predators. They prey on your vulnerability. They prey, prey on the insecurities. They prey on low self-esteem. They prey on uncertainty. They prey on indecisiveness. They prey on the timid. They prey on the, you know how you're always trying to give someone the benefit of the doubt? Right. You know, you're always giving somebody another chance. Oh, he didn't mean it that way. No, he meant exactly what he said. He meant exactly what he did. But you're like, no, mm -hmm. you know. And you notice how to you, the narcissists are so much more attractive than the other guys. You, like, I'm talking physically, yeah. <laughs> the way they smell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, like it's like on a pheromone level. That's true. Soft-hearted, soft-hearted, um, uh, empaths, sensitive-hearted people are naturally attracted to the confidence, arrogance, ego, needy. You know how they always need you for something? They always, because you're constantly doing for them and feeding them. So it's like this match made in heaven of trauma bonding, right? Like he needs constant feeding and you're willing to give it. You're willing to give it. And to you, it's like, oh my God, he's just amazing. And he smells good and he's so sexy and he's so up. I, girl, you know I know what I'm talking about. And I have to yeah, keep it real I for you. <laughs> like if there were 10 men lined up, you'd pick out the two narcissists as the ones you want to date if you were on a dating show. You would just naturally, organically, you would smell the pheromones from over there and be like, oh, him, him right there. Yes. Yes, Nathan the narcissist. <laughs> That's who I want. That's an old time so sexy girl. Yes, Nathan, the narcissist. He's got to be the one. And, and, Ooh, no. and, and guess what? When you get healed, you'll be looking at him like when those, when those pain goggles and abuse goggles come off, you looking at him like, oh, uh-uh. You can see it coming a mile away. They'll get on your nerves. They're arrogant. The minute you're talking about yourself too much, they won't like it. They won't like you having goals. They won't like you talking about your dreams. They won't like you talking about your endeavors. They won't like you exercising. They don't like you. Oh, what are you doing? I'm saying my affirmations. Why are you doing that? What, what's that for? Yes, right? Because they don't want you being strong. They don't want you believing in yourself. So guess what? When you get yourself built up, you could go on a date with another, give me another N word. Instead of Nathan, what's another Nate? Nathan, what's another man's name that starts with an N? Uh, that's another N word. Hmm. They're a man, Nathan. I got nothing. Nick. Nick. Let's do Nick. Nick the narcissist. You <laughs> want to date with Nick the narcissist, and you'll be sitting across the table from Nick the narcissist, like, oh no, uh uh, been there, done that, right? Nolan, Nolan the narcissist, Nino the narcissist, you'll be like, oh no, uh-uh, recognize that spirit from a mile away, boo, we, we ain't, no, honey, we ain't got time for this, you'll get on his nerves, somebody said, Nicholas the, the narcissist, you'll be like, Nicholas, ain't it, this is not the thing, been there, done that, right, got the, got the badge, got the card for it, nope, I'm good, you'll literally 
your desires and your interests and your what interests you and what attracts you will change. Your appetite will change. Your desires will change. That literally God will take the taste of it out of your mouth as you heal and as you slow down. No more rushing in. You rush in, don't you? You love to feel like you're being swept up, swept off your feet, which narcissists love to do. Swoop in, love bomb you. Oh, you're wonderful, you're beautiful. And you miss all the signs that he's a jerk. Right? Because he's sweeping, yeah. saying all the pretty things you want to hear. All the pretty things that 10, 11, 12-year-old Deja wants to hear. Grown woman, grown ass woman, Deja, don't need to hear them pretty things. Grown ass Deja is like, boo, I know who I am. You, you ain't got to tell me that. Thank you. That's sweet. But what are you about? Where are your mind at? What are your dreams? What are your goals? What are you working on? What do you believe in? What books you read? Because you don't ask a lot of right. questions. You don't. You, you, you do not ask a lot of questions. You don't do a lot of discovery. The little girl Deja is just so happy to feel loved. So happy to get attention. See how the little child in us is actually here right now playing out, making decisions in this grown body? Yes, absolutely. Makes a lot of sense. And it's like I say to every guest, isn't it logical? Mm -hmm. Could you expect anything different from yourself at 30 based on what you've survived and based on what you've come through? It's basically like you were telling the young lady earlier. It's it's you're literally reprogramming your brain because I was just making a YouTube the other night about how I was having these nightmares and this spirit is attacking you in this dream and you're being taken through these same experiences and you're waking up feeling unworthy and not enough. And I was just talking about how you have to trick your brain like, no, I'm not that. You have to do that every day. Yeah. And sometimes it's not easy. No. And and I'll give you I'll give you another really important healing step. There's a there's a healing season that a lot of people miss before they go into the self empowerment season. Like when you know how we know. We know to do the affirmations. We know self-talk. We know all of this builds confidence. We know it's key to, you know, being able to build yourself up, to believe in yourself. We know that. However, before we get to that stage, there's this crucial step in healing that people don't know about, which is where you have to purge. You've got to purge all this old mess that's down deep on the inside. I would have healing classes in Atlanta. And Deja, when I tell you women would come into healing class and they're sharing some of the most horrible, abusive stories, you know, you've ever heard in your life. And when it would come time, I would put each woman in the middle of the circle and pray over her. And then we would go through a ritual of releasing everything they had come there to release that day, right? They would release it. And when I say these women would in, be falling on the ground screaming, deep down on the inside, the pain that's deep down in there. So stop and think about everything you've been through because it started with your father. Now it's been relationships and men. It's been friends. It's been all kinds of layers of pain, right? You're 30 now. You're not 12. Mm -hmm. You're 30. Mm -hmm. So it's just layer right. upon layer upon layer. So now you're coming along and you're saying affirmations on top of 20 layers of doo-doo on top of 20 layers of toxic baggage and pain, you're like, I'm so worthy, I am enough, I am beautiful, I am healed, I am loving, I am kind, I am deserving, I am abundant. I 
So you're saying all this stuff, but 20, is that going to reach down through 20 layers of pain and toxic craziness and abuse and rejection and disappointment? and words that other people have spoken to you that got deep down in your psyche that come up as self-talk. It's actually somebody else's words that now have become part of your own psyche. Do you see where I'm going with this? That makes a lot of sense. So you're, you're waking up every morning, oh, no, bad dream. Okay, Deja, you got this. You are loved, honey. You're deserving. Love is coming for you. You're saying, oh, you... You see what I'm saying? But deep down on the inside, there are seeds, there's a root, there's root issues, root pain that's taking up too much space for the stuff you're doing right now to even be able to really take hold. Hmm. Because you can be saying those words, but how often do you really feel that way? How often do you really feel deserving, feel worthy, feel loved, feel abundant, feel prosperous? Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? It's like there's words, but how often do you really feel that way? Hmm. Not every day. Not enough. So guess it's what? Your enough. number one law of attraction manifestation tool is not words feelings feelings mm -hmm. you're attracting what you're feeling mm. Mm. so words are just words it's just lip service but if it doesn't get down on the soul level if it doesn't get so deep in us to where we feel that thing right we feel it i am abundant i feel amazing i'm so deserving of everything right if you don't feel that thing like a bolt of sunshine coming out your chest out of your stomach right to where it gets down on the inside of you and all that pain is sabotaging the sunshine. Mm -hmm. So hmm. that's the work. Are you you're in? Are you're not in the work master class, right? No, we're gonna put you in the work master class. You're gonna take the e course. It's our gift to you as a guest. Okay, you're going to start to begin this sacred soul work. Deja, all I'm going to tell you is anybody that's in class right now can tell you, you're going to have to buckle up, okay? I, I mean, I try to I try to give as many warning labels as I can that come along with this work, right? It's totally different than therapy. Totally different than therapy, okay? It's not therapy. It's got some clinical therapy things in it. I, I I'm trained. I can't help it. I'm going to put some clinical therapy stuff in there. However, it's a, it is spiritual life coaching. It's spiritual healing work to help you get down on the okay. inside and excavate. That's what I need. And I promise, it, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Royal said very different. She's in class. Very different from therapy. Okay. Very different. Um, it's not going to be easy, sweetheart, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Everything you've been praying for, everything you've been asking God for that you just feel like has been so out of reach that no matter how hard you try, you just can't seem to connect the dots to make it click. This is the work that connects the dots. Okay. So we can really let go and be right. free. What'd you say? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. I'm ready for you. I'm ready. For you. I'm ready for you. Um, I would like you to you know, you're gonna Ashley's gonna put you in the class by the end of the week. Ashley, wait till we get the e course set up. I'll send you the new link. Um I want you to hold off confronting people any more about the abuse, okay? Hold off. Um, I would like you to take 
the eight weeks where you're in the master class and just focus on you. Like, okay. you know, really just take the time as a timeout to really just focus on you. I've got a project coming up where we're going to focus on molestation and rape. I can tell you more about that as we begin to launch that. Um, it would be something very, I think you'll be very interested in to be an advocate, an advocate to be able to help people who are who have been molested or been raped about taking their authority, taking their power back, just like you've done. You've done it on your own which takes so much courage, sweetheart. And I really believe that that was a step that was the initial step of unlocking your healing, right? Because you can't heal secrets. Right. When things are secrets, guys, it is so difficult to heal secrets. So difficult. Um, Yes, the spiritual and religious detox class will be coming. I'm not sure that Deja really needs it, but I, I know she needs our the mat, the work master class. You definitely need that. Um, and then you're going to need the nice for what course as soon as we, we launch that as well. Because I got to teach you how to be a beast, <laughs> how, to, how, to, how to walk it out, right? <laughs> how to walk it out. Yeah, because I, I got to teach you. And like I said, I got to teach you guys how to think like me. Right. So, you know, like I'm the bomb. Right. And not feel any shame or guilt whatsoever about how you think about yourself. All right. Deja, thank you so much, love, for coming on. I appreciate you. Let me pray for you before we go. God, I thank you for Deja. I thank you, God, for what's ahead. I'm so excited for her. I'm excited for this breakthrough. I'm excited for this work that she's about to begin to go to her next level. God, we thank you even now for protection protection and provision as you see her and you know her heart, you know the desires of her heart, I ask her, God, that you bring her even more courage. And I look forward to the courage you're going to give her as she moves forward in purpose, the next levels, the dreams she has of where her blogging, influencing, and being an advocate will take her. We thank you in advance for the work she's going to do in the kingdom to make a difference in the lives of those who have been abused and victimized, to set people free, and to help people heal. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, sweetheart. God is going to end up using you. You're going to do really, really powerful, amazing, wonderful things because of your courage, honey. The courage to speak up, the courage to speak out, that's a healer. That's an advocate. That's somebody who's willing to stand in the gap for others and make a difference. And, and that's what's in you. You're already doing it. You're already doing it. Even from your place of just being partially healed, you're doing it. So that means imagine when you get healed, healed on the next level, this next level you're going to imagine how powerful and how much you are going to make a difference in this world for people who have been hurt. It's going to be awesome. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> yes, Blessings and abundance, love. Thank you so much for coming on. If you just hit your X, honey, it'll help you exit off of the live stream. Love you and thank you so much. We'll be in contact. Ashley will definitely be reaching out. Hey, okay, thank You're you. You're welcome, love. Bye bye. So, guys, I want to finish with this with this thought, and I know I'm over on time. You, you guys know I'm gonna have to talk for just an hour. Um. There are levels to healing, guys. There are levels to healing. There are levels to life. There are levels to abundance. Not for one second ever think that you are done healing, that you are, you've arrived. It's all done. Everything you're asking God for, for in this next level, everything that you are requesting, everything that you're seeking is a different level of healing. A different level of healing. That's exactly. A, you were born into this world. Perfect from God. Perfect. And all we're doing is unlearning and being restored to our original divine state. That's what these levels are. Is being restored to our original divine state. 
All right. Blessings in abundance. Mwah. I love you guys. I will see you next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Those of you who are getting into the certification to become a certified abundant life coach, make sure you get your applications in. Those spots are going fast. We're going to sell out as usual. Make sure you get your applications in, get your payments locked in, okay? Because we want to make sure you're in there at this next enrollment for leadership. This is for the leadership side. Those of you who are wanting to make a difference and wanting to help people, all right? And start a professional coaching business. All right. Are you still accepting people into the masterclass? Um, Kiana, yes. So look for an email from us by the end of the week. We're going to launch the e-course and you can get signed up to take the e-course. So yes, you'll be accepted in at the end of the week. Okay. All right. Mwah. Blessings in abundance, guys. Talk to you soon. See you next week. You're welcome, guys. Love you. Bye-bye.